Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gavin Fish. Thank you very much for joining me. For those of you who are new here, welcome. I hope that you like what you see and you will consider subscribing to the channel if you like it. For those of you who come back week after week, every upload, Sundays and Wednesdays, thank you so much for that support. It means the world to me. Today's video is going to be an important one that I'm going to ask you to share all over social media because of the three photos that I received. More about that in just a minute, but we don't know, I don't know if these photos are legitimate or not, and I'm going to be depending on you guys and all of true crime aficionados and enthusiasts around the world to try to determine this. So um, thank you for, for doing that. And also to my patrons, you guys are uh, a cut above, man. Thank you so much. Now, before we get into photos, I just want to show you over here on my website, gavinfish.com, if you ever would like to send in any information to me, all you have to do is go over here to this contact uh, menu item, click on it, and there is this form that you can fill out and send my way. You do not have to put in your name, your email address, or phone number. Those can be completely anonymous. Now, I did say in my Sunday update, but I want to reiterate here that if you want to be completely anonymous, you probably should use some sort of VPN, like NordVPN. This is not an ad, by the way. NordVPN, Atlas VPN, what, whatever VPN you choose that does not um, retain logs. That makes it very difficult for anybody to find out who you are. This form on my website does not store IP addresses, but servers, web servers, anytime somebody visits my website, the web server will log multiple times, every time a file is loaded, the IP address that it's coming from. So I could, if I wanted to, find that out. I never have, I don't plan on it, I never will, but if you wanna remain completely anonymous, please use a VPN, okay? Now, uh, I want to go through a couple of comments that I received on my video this past Sunday where I introduced you guys to what had happened a couple weeks ago. I got this anonymous message through the website stating that they had three photos purportedly from the crime scene of um, Libby and Abby's where, where they found the body. I have spent a lot of time trying to authenticate if these are real or not. I am convinced that they're real, but I I might have the wool pulled over my eyes. This this is something that I need your help on. So let me start with, I only have four comments that I want to go over uh, and just talk it over with you guys. The first one says, I'm sure there's photos out there because there were so civilians at the scene so they are most likely legit. I know there were some floating around early on, right? So this is what the person told me when I received that message, is that these are not photos taken by the police or by crime scene investigators or any other investigating agency. These photos were taken by civilians, by volunteers who went out looking for Abby and Libby. So... Um, yeah. N comment number two says you should report to authorities and see if you have permission to post them until information can be released. Okay, so just a little bit about me. For those of you who are new here, or even those that are around, just a, a quick reminder. I always default to transparency. I always do. Um, of course, I ask myself the question, you know, if I can do something, should I do that thing? I do ask myself that question. I try to be very sensitive about those things. But the overriding thing for me is transparency. And one of the things that law enforcement does, and I am pro law enforcement. These are men and women that do fabulous work bringing justice to families that otherwise wouldn't have justice. I am 
pro law enforcement. But one of the things that law enforcement does is under the guise of trying to protect their case, they they just won't release anything. And I understand it, it's their training, but in this case I've asked myself the three photos that I received are they going to jeopardize the case? And I think the answer is no. I think that the defense in this case, we have an arrest made here. I think the defense, there are Brady laws. There are all sorts of laws that make any evidence that the prosecutor has, especially exculpatory evidence, available to them. Anything that the prosecutors discover is supposed to go over to the defense with very limited exceptions. I think the defense already has the crime scene photos taken by police. So I don't think that we're going to jeopardize anything here. I feel like we're in the clear. If I deeply, truly felt that this was going to jeopardize the case against their suspect, Mr. Allen, I would not show the photos. Uh, but again, I default mostly to transparency. Okay. Number three, in 2020, people said that a blog posted what could be leaked photos. And I remembered that the photo was posted on Facebook in some group about the case. I never saw it, but I know it happened. It's possible that the photos that I'm going to show you are, were leaked before. It's possible. I never saw them. And just a little bit about me, for those of you who don't know, I really am a documents person. I only go after cases if I have evidence to look at. Because the Delphi case, all of the evidence has been kept close to the vest in law enforcement, I steered clear of this case until we had an affidavit of probable cause against Richard Allen. And at that point, I had something to look at, right? So while I care about the case and I care about these girls, I have not been paying super close attention. I bet most of you who are watching this video know more about this case than I do. I readily admit that. So these may be photos that have been out before. I don't know. I didn't see them. I did do a search of Facebook after I saw this comment to see if I could find them and I couldn't find them. That doesn't mean that they weren't out there, right? Okay. Number four is, uh, at Peck 404 says, if they're real, then you can crystal clearly see their face, except Libby was the face down with leaves and twigs all over her upper body. Okay, so Peck 404 knows way more about this case than I do, but the reason that I brought this comment up is, I if I had photos of the girls' bodies, which I do not, if I had those, there is no way that I would ever share those with anybody ever, ever. I just wouldn't do that. Now, uh, exhibit A, I have seen photos of David Elmquist. I have seen photos of Amanda Winkowski, of Julia Davis, of Ellen Greenberg, of Shelby Thornburg. All of these cases that I care about, I have access to those those photos of those poor victims' bodies, mostly supplied to me by their family members so that I can understand the case. But I have committed to them, and I will always keep my commitment that I will never, ever, ever show those photos publicly. The, the limited exceptions to those are very close cropped in things. Uh, like, for example, in Amanda Winkowski's case, she had some wounds on her face, and I took an autopsy photo and I zoomed up on that and I showed that with the permission of her family. So heavily edited, heavily redacted for the purpose of pushing forward the case, I will break that rule, but only with the, with the permission of the family. So th that, those are my personal ethics in these cases. So getting back to this comment, I do not have a picture of Libby and Abby their bodies on the ground near the bridge, near the creek. I do not have those, and if I did, I would never show them. The photos that I have today have to do with the clothing that the girls were wearing that day. So let me 
let's get into the clothing a little bit and I promise I'm going to get to the photos. I'm not stringing you guys along. I just want to kind of set this up. When I received the photos, I went through the process of trying to authenticate them. Because they're photos of clothing, I wanted to figure out if it was ever out there what kind of clothing the girls were wearing. Again, I've already told you, I have not stayed up to date on this case on a daily or weekly basis. Again, not because I don't care, but because I don't feel like I can help until we have evidence to look at. Okay, so I found a YouTube video where Kelsey German was being interviewed that I would like to show you guys, uh, just a portion of it, and um, just to kind of comment on that what she's talking about is the day that they found the girl. So check this out. And then as we were going back up to towards the private drive, um, there was a group of people standing in the driveway and another group that was down where I was, but just a little bit more towards the house that's down there. Mm -hmm. um, I see. And when I was standing up there, I knew but we hadn't found anything. And so we were going to go back up and go back towards where the rest of our group was. And then somebody yelled up that they'd found a shoe and asked um, anybody that was around what type of shoes the girls were wearing. Uh, and as soon as I identified the shoe that they had found, um, they actually looked across the creek and saw them. Okay, so that shoe is important, right? That is how they started to identify, hey, there, we found a shoe. This is uh, called up to the sister. What kind of shoes were they wearing? Was Libby wearing? And, um, and she identified it. It apparently matched. So I was trying to figure out the, the kind of shoe that was, that was worn because I have a picture of a shoe here, right? So I found a Facebook post. I'm going, let me, uh, let me get this. I found a Facebook post from February 14th, 2017. And in this post, it says that German is described as five foot, four inches tall with a heavy build, shoulder length, blonde hair, and blue eyes. She was last seen, she was last seen wearing a tie dyed shirt, gray sweatpants, with unknown black lettering and black Nike shoes. So I'm gonna focus on the tie-dyed shirt and the black Nike shoes because this has to do with the, the photos that I have. So black Nike shoes, the, the picture of the shoe that I have is of a black Nike shoe with a white swoosh. I'm gonna show it to you in just a second. Um, I found a photo of um, Libby wearing a, um, a tie dyed shirt, though. I don't know that this is the tie dyed shirt it just, and I'm sure that you've seen this photo before, but this is the, I guess the kind of fashion that Libby was into. She liked tie dye. She liked the bright colors. And this is the only photo that I could find in my research over a few days that had her in a tie dye shirt. But that's what she was wearing, tie-dye, uh, gray sweatpants, and a um, and that, you know, black Nike uh, shoe. I also uh, found this article in the Internet Archive, which was on the um, 14th of February, 2017. And it looks like, I mean, this must have come from the police description, like the be on the lookout, the, uh, the description of the girls, right? The, uh, why am I having such a hard time? There we go. Uh, Libby and Abby's description. Um, so I feel like the black Nike shoe, the tie dyed shirt, that is, I, you know, that is true. Okay. So with that, I'm just going to go over and show you, uh, Let's see the first photo. Let me just head over here and show you the first photo. And um, I just, here we go. 
So you guys will have to forgive me. I have put a bunch of uh, watermarks over this photo, all, all three photos. And the reason that I've done that isn't really to protect, I guess, you know, my work on this because this wasn't my work. I just, because I don't know that the photo is real, I don't want it just circulating the internet as if it is uh, without people being able to find me and seeing that I've made a concerted effort to figure out if it is real. So if people like screen grab this video and put it all over the place, that's, that's what I'm trying to protect against. Now, while I'm on that subject, the, the photos that came to me had their metadata intact. And when I went and I put on this watermark, it adds something to the metadata. So I'm going to show that to you now. Down here on the bottom of the screen, I have the original photo just off so that you can't see it, but I'm gonna click on it and bring up the metadata, okay? This is, uh, on a Mac, it's just really easy to see the metadata on a, um, on a photo. You just hit Command-I. But it gives you information about the photo and uh, gives you information about, you know, when it was taken, what kind of camera was used, those sorts of things. The EXIF data gives you way more information. Now, this is the, the metadata for the original photo. If I click on the watermarked photo, you'll see that it adds a couple of, uh, a couple of tabs that you don't see in the other one, right? So the, I guess it's probably the uh, IPTC and the JFIF tabs. So on the ITPC or IPTC tab, it just keeps the created date and time. And then on the JFIF tab, it just puts a progressive thing. But then a change that it makes is it puts today's, or this morning when I put the watermark on it, it put that date and time. So you can kind of see the difference between uh, that and that, right? It um, It's a little bit different. And I just want to be completely transparent about that with you guys without showing an unwatermarked, I guess, version of the, of the photo for the reason that I've already explained, okay? So um, I'm gonna get into this metadata here in just a minute, but for now, let's just take a look at the photos, okay? This first photo is of a black Nike shoe with a white swoosh upside down in a bunch of leaves and debris in the creek, it looks like to me, right? And then up here in the corner, uh, you'll be able to see it in another photo, but you can see some other stuff there. That's, I'm gonna show you that in the third photo, okay? But here is the Nike shoe that Libby German was wearing, I believe. I'm not going to say that with certainty. You guys help me here. But I believe that that is Libby German shoe. Okay. Photo number two. It's kind of hard to see. Um, but if we zoom up on it, inside the water there, I believe that that is a pink sock. I believe it's a sock and I believe it's pink. Now... <laughs> It's underwater, the water is green, right? And I am severely colorblind. I'm just gonna put that out there. So you guys might see a completely different color. I see pink and I, I hope that it's pink, but just again, to be uh, completely transparent about this stuff, I, I, I believe that's a pink sock. I don't know what color sock Libby or Abby socks Libby or Abby were wearing but that's the second photo. Now the third photo, I'm just gonna maybe prepare you for this one. The third photo, not only did I add watermarking, but you know how when you take a picture down on the ground and the sun is behind you, your shadow will be on the, wa on the water or on the ground, right? That's what happened in this next photo. And it shows the shape of the person who took the photo. And I thought, you know, for the, for maybe the privacy of that person. And I know that you guys are probably rolling your eyes, like, 
Gavin's ethics are weird, right? He's willing to show photos without going to police on this, but he's going to redact, you know, somebody's shadow. But I did do that. I pixelated that side of the screen to kind of obscure the shape of the of the person who who took the photo, okay? Um all right, so here we go here. So uh, this is the shoe that we looked at in photo number one, right? It's the same shoe. That shoe and this shoe are the same photo. And then moving down into the left, we see a pair of white underwear. I believe those are white underwear. And then in the bottom corner, we see what appears to me to be a tie-dyed shirt. Let me, uh, let me go up in there. And the tie-dye to me looks yellow, it looks green and blue, it looks red and pink, and it kind of reminds me of the, um, of this, not that one, let's see, this shirt right here that Libby is wearing, though I can't see any, um, I can't see any print on it or anything, but it does have the color pattern of that photo that I just showed you, this one right here. To me, anyway, I that's what I believe. Um, and I really want to be able to, to make sure that these are photos of the actual crime scene. And why would I wanna do that, guys? There, I mean, you might be asking yourself, Gavin, why are you showing us this? This is just clothing, and does this tell us anything? Well, the thing that it tells me is that I believe that Libby German, when she was found, was not wearing clothing. I don't have any evidence or any photos of Abby, her clothing anywhere. I don't know if the sock would be hers or if it would be Libby. I don't know. But at the very least, I think what this, what these photos are, are showing us is that Libby was undressed all the way down to her underwear in this case, right? The, I believe that those are, um, that is a pair of, of underwear that a girl of the size of Libby German would wear. That's what I think. So I think, I think that's probably what, um, what the evidentiary value is of this. Now let's get into the EXIF data just a little bit. I'm going to hit the command I. And I want to take a look at this first, the Samsung SM G870A. Okay, the um, if we go over, I went to Wikipedia, I did a search on that model number, you can see it right here, down here in the corner. If you take a look at my mouse, the lower right-hand corner, the SM G870A uh, was a Samsung Galaxy S5. They were released on April 11th of 2014. So to me, that shows that the timeline is about right. You know, I'm... I'm rocking an iPhone 12, you know, 12 Pro here. So, which is a few years old. I think it's pretty typical for somebody to, to use a phone for uh, two or three years. And so that Samsung SM G870A would be what took the photo. That's the device that took the photo. So we're talking about a Samsung Galaxy S5. The software with Adobe Photoshop, that was me when I uh, pixelated and added the, the watermark. And then the date was from today when I did the same thing. If we go over to uh, the IEPTC tab, we can see that it was created February 14th at 27, uh, February 14th, 2017 at 11.13 a.m. Now guys, this one kind of uh, tricked me a little bit because I read on, uh, I think it was, I think it was Discovery, Discovery Channel's website that the girls were found around 1215. I believe that that is the case. And this photo was taken at 1113, 
But then I found out something weird about the state of Idaho. In Delphi, at 12.15, you, most of the state, it would be 12.15, right? But Delphi is this little black dot in the, in the map that you can kind of see uh, kind of a little off center down into the left, that little black dot inside that county, that is where Delphi is. The six counties to the northwest, they in the red, they are in a different time zone. They are in the mountain time zone, I believe, right? Or, well, they're one time zone earlier. And there are six other counties in the south, southwest tip of Indiana that are also in a different time zone. So while most of Indiana is in one time zone, portion of Indiana is not, and it is one of the portions where it is not is actually pretty close. So I started asking myself, well, if volunteers came in or family members came in and they traveled a, like two counties away, which is not uncommon, at least where I live out here in Pennsylvania, it, it was just a Friday night that I went two counties away to help uh, with a search. Well, it was really to report on the search of a uh, missing gentleman. Um, so it's not uncommon for somebody to travel in. So what I believe is that the phone that took this photo was probably from one of those six counties in the northwest of the state or one of the six counties in the southwest of the state. And it was still set to an hour earlier in that time zone. Um, this one tells us a little bit more, right? Tells us the time it was digitized and so forth gives us a little bit of um, more information. It even tells us the time zone uh, that it was in when, well, it, it tells us the time zone that the camera was set to when the picture was taken. It doesn't tell us where it was in because GPS was not enabled for this camera or for this phone at the time. And we know that, or at least I surmise that because there's no GPS data anywhere in this EXIF data. And typically JPEGs hold that information if GPS is turned on on your phone. So because there is no GPS data here, um, I only know that the time zone of the camera was Greenwich minus six. And Greenwich minus six happens to be this area in the red. Greenwich minus five is the area in the yellow. Um, so let's see, let me get back to the photos so that you can kind of take a look at that. Now, this EXIF data is pretty much the same for all of them. Uh, this one was at 11.13.42, uh, this one was at 11.13.18, and this one was at 11.13.27. So they were taken in this order, right? Uh, this one went first, this one went second, and then the sock was found last. But it was within the same 11.13 a.m. minute, so I'm guessing that it was very, very close to the other stuff, the shoe and the, um, the underwear and the, um, the shirt. Now I can't tell, but to me, it does look like there might be something underneath the underwear, something that's dark in color. That's maybe black in color or Navy blue. Again, I'm, I'm pretty colorblind. Um, so I don't know exactly it, you know, if those might, what that might be. Um, maybe it was another shirt or a pair of pants or something. I just don't know, but I'm hoping that you guys will be able to maybe take a look at these closely. By the time I publish this video on Wednesday, I will publish these photos onto my website. They will still have the watermark on them because I just don't want them going everywhere and not have the responsibility of saying, hey, I don't know that these are real. So I want people to be able to come back. I want them to see me. I want them to know that I just don't know if these are, if they're real or not. Okay. So 
if you go over to the website, let me uh, let me just show it to you. Um, if you go over to my website, which is gavinfish.com, you can click on cases and there is a list of things that I am working on and I will add Abby and Libby to this case page. You'll be able to find it there when I publish this um, on Wednesday. Okay. With that, guys, I thank you very much for coming. Please like and subscribe. Please like this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you like this kind of content. Please go ahead and put your sincere comments down below. I don't mind criticism. If you think that I shouldn't have done this, I, I want to hear from you. Um, there's nothing that I can do about it now because I have done it, but uh, I do want to hear from you. To my patrons, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do for me, for making it possible for me to be able to run the website that makes it so that people can send me information. If you are a family member or a friend of the victims and you want to reach out to me, even if it's to kind of take me to task for what I've done here, because I, I typically am in contact with the family members of the cases that I cover, um, please reach out to me on my website. Just go to gavinfish.com, click on this contact uh, button and, and get in touch with me. If you would like me to reach back out to you, please include your email address or phone number. I never share those with anybody. And if you would like to be in touch, I'm happy to do that. If you were one of the volunteers that day and, or maybe you were the person who took those photos, I don't even know that the person who provided the photos to me took the photos. I don't, I don't know anything about that. So if you took the photos and you want to talk to me that just go to the website and, and let's talk it out. With that, I um, once again thank you for everything that you do for me, and I bid you adieu, and I hope to see you next time. Take care. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel, and if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below.